Once upon a time, the animals in a farm were left with no food. The little red hen decided to wander around the field to look for something to eat. She first went next to the cow. Will you come with me around the field to find something to eat? No, I won't. It's too hot. I can't be bothered to walk. She then went next to the pig. Will you help me find food? No, I can't come. It's too hot and I can't be bothered to move. Later then, went next to the dog. Will you help me find food? No, I can't. It's too hot and I can't walk when it's hot. And in the end, went next to the duck. Will you come with me to find something to eat? No, I can't. It's too hot. I can't get out of the water. When nobody bothered to come with her, the hen decided to leave the farm on her own. As she walked, she found some wheat grains on the ground. She was very happy. She returned to the farm. She decided to plant the wheat grains. She thought that her friends would help her. Cow, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I already told you it's too hot. The hen went over to the pig. Pig, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. The weather is way too hot for this. She then went next to the dog. Dog, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, it's way too hot. And at last she went next to the duck. Hey, duck, I found some wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. I can't leave the water in this heat. Well, I'll plant them myself. When she saw that no one wanted to help her, she decided to plant them herself. Weeks had gone by. The rainy days had begun. The seeds had sprouted. But all the wild grass in the garden needed some cleaning. Who's going to help me clean the grass? It's too muddy now. I can't help you. I'm not up to it. I won't leave my spot. I'll get dirty. Can't do it. Don't feel good today. I can't help. In that case, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen began to clean the wild grass amongst the sprouts. Not long after, the wheat began to grow. It was now time to harvest the ripe wheat. The hen went next to her friends and asked if they would help her harvest the crop. Hey cow, buddy! Wheat has grown! Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. Hey pig! Guess what? The wheat has grown! Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. I won't. Hey, my body dog. The wheat has grown. Will you come and help me harvest the crop? Who, me? Of course not. Hey, ducky ducky. The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? Of course I can't. Okay, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen worked till night time. She harvested the wheat kernels, one by one, all by herself. It was now time to turn the wheat to flour. Off she went to ask for help from her friends. Hey guys! We must grind the wheat to make flour. Who would like to help me? I can't help. It's time for me to give milk. I can't move from my spot. <laughs> I can't help either. It's snap time for me. I can't help at all. Can't help. Need to get into the water and cool down. The hen ground the wheat in the mill and turned it into flour. Now let's make some delicious bread. The hen went next to her friends and wanted to give them one last chance. Cow, I'm going to make bread. Would you like to... Help me? No, nope, I can't. I'm in no situation to work. What about you, pig? <sighs> Not today. 
I'm too tired to help today. No, no, I can't. No, I can't. And besides, I don't know how to make bread. This time, the hen was very angry. All by herself, she went to the kitchen. First, she made bread with the flour she had grounded. Then she gave it a form. And at last, put it in the oven and waited for it to bake. After the amazing smell of the bread had spread, she took it out of the oven, went out to the garden and sat on the table. Later, called out to her friends. Hey guys, the bread is ready. Who would like to eat it with me? Seeing the amazing bread in front of the hen, in a flash they all went next to her. I want some. Oh, me too. Right when I'm so hungry. Great timing, hen. Hey, me too, hen. I love bread. Come on, let's eat. No, I can't. I can't. I did everything on my own. Only I deserve to eat it all on my own. With great appetite, the hen began to eat her bread but couldn't handle the fact that her friends were so hungry. From now on, if you promise to help, I will share my bread with you. All the farmyard animals were ashamed and sorry. They knew she was right. We, we promise you, hen, no more laziness. The hen knew her friends learned a good lesson, so she shared her bread with them. With an amazing appetite, they were now so happy with a full tummy. Once upon a time, the animals in a farm were left with no food. The little red hen decided to wander around the field to look for something to eat. She first went next to the cow. with me around the field to find something to eat. No, I won't. It's too hot. I can't be bothered to walk. She then went next to the pig. <laughs> Will you help me find food? No, I can't come. It's too hot and I can't be bothered to move. Later then, went next to the dog. <laughs> Will you help me find food? No, I can't. It's too hot and I can't walk when it's hot. And in the end, went next to the duck. <laughs> Will you come with me to find something to eat? No, I can't. It's too hot. I can't get out of the water. When nobody bothered to come with her, the hen decided to leave the farm on her own. As she walked, she found some wheat grains on the ground. She was very happy. She returned to the farm. She decided to plant the wheat grains. She thought that her friends would help her. Cow, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I already told you it's too hot. The hen went over to the pig. Pig, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. The weather is way too hot for this. She then went next to the dog. Dog, look, I found wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, it's way too hot. And at last she went next to the duck. Hey, duck, I found some wheat grains. Would you like to plant them with me? No, I can't. I can't leave the water in this heat. Well, I'll plant them myself. When she saw that no one wanted to help her, she decided to plant them herself. Weeks had gone by. The rainy days had begun. The seeds had sprouted. But all the wild grass in the garden needed some cleaning. Who's going to help me clean the grass? It's too muddy now. I can't help you. I'm not up to it. I won't leave my spot. I'll get dirty. Can't do it. Don't feel good today. I can't help. In that case, I'll do it on my own. 
The little red hen began to clean the wild grass amongst the sprouts. Not long after, the wheat began to grow. It was now time to harvest the ripe wheat. The hen went next to her friends and asked if they would help her harvest the crop. Hey cow, buddy! Wheat has grown! Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. Hey pig! Guess what? The wheat has grown! Will you help me harvest the crop? No, I can't. I won't. Hey, my body dog. The wheat has grown. Will you come and help me harvest the crop? Who, oh, me? Of course not. Hey, ducky ducky. The wheat has grown. Will you help me harvest the crop? Of course I can't. Okay, I'll do it on my own. The little red hen worked till night time. She harvested the wheat kernels, one by one, all by herself. It was now time to turn the wheat to flour. Off she went to ask for help from her friends. Hey guys! We must grind the wheat to make flour. Who would like to help me? I can't help. It's time for me to give milk. I can't move from my spot. <laughs> I can't help either. It's nap time for me. I can't help at all. Can't help. Need to get into the water and cool down. The hen ground the wheat in the mill and turned it into flour. Now let's make some delicious bread. The hen went next to her friends and wanted to give them one last chance. Cow, I'm going to make bread. Would you like to... Help me? Nope, I can't. I'm in no situation to work. What about you, pig? <sighs> Not today. I'm too tired to help today. No, no, I can't. No, I can't. And besides, I don't know how to make bread. This time, the hen was very angry. All by herself, she went to the kitchen. First, she made bread with the flour she had grounded. Then, she gave it a form and at last put it in the oven and waited for it to bake. After the amazing smell of the bread had spread, she took it out of the oven, went out to the garden and sat on the table. Later, called out to her friends. Hey guys, the bread is ready. Who would like to eat it with me? Seeing the amazing bread in front of the hen, in a flash they all went next to her. I want some. Oh, me too. Right when I'm so hungry. Great timing, hen. Hey, me too, hen. I love bread. Come on, let's eat. No, I can't. I can't. I did everything on my own. Only I deserve to eat it, all on my own! With great appetite, the hen began to eat her bread, but couldn't handle the fact that her friends were so hungry. From now on, if you promise to help, I will share my bread with you. All the farmyard animals were ashamed and sorry. They knew she was right. We, we promise you hen no more laziness. The hen knew her friends learnt a good lesson, so she shared her bread with them. With an amazing appetite, they were now so happy with a full tummy. In a forest lived a rabbit, wandering all day long, all he did was jump up and admire himself. He loved talking about how much faster he was than the other animals. I'm the fastest animal in the forest. Would anyone like to race with me? He sure did run fast with his very big feet. The other animals hated the way he would show off. In saying that, they never ever won a race. Yes, I win again. Why? Because I'm fast. Everywhere he went, he would say, 
I'm so vast, no one could ever pass me. His words had begun to disturb all the other animals in the forest. Okay, he might be the fastest, but the fact that he says and shows off about it's not nice. Someone should teach my lesson to smarten up. All that was said amongst all the animals in the forest managed to go to the turtle. The turtle walked very slow. It would take him a day to reach the distance the rabbit could make in a minute. The turtle wished he would come across the rabbit one of these days. He went to the other animals and told them that he would like to race with the rabbit. You want to race him? Not even the fastest animals have won against the rabbit. How can you? You leave that part up to me. The turtle went next to the rabbit. Good day, Mr. Rabbit. I have been searching for you. Curiously, the rabbit asked. And why might you be looking for me? I hear that you are the fastest animal in the forest. Well, actually, that's what you think. But to be sure, I would like to race with you. Let's see who is faster. As soon as the turtle had finished what he had to say, the rabbit began to laugh so hard that all the other animals in the forest heard him. <laughs> you <laughs> with me? <laughs> A race? <laughs> Are you joking me? It's impossible for you to pass me. By the time you take a step, I would finish the race. Well, unless we race, we will never know, will we? Okay, be ready then. Tomorrow morning we race. As the turtle began walking away, the rabbit continued on laughing. <laughs> the following morning, the animals arrived at the race course. They noticed the turtle waiting at the starting line, all ready to go. Very sure of himself, the turtle was smiling. Please tell me how you're going to beat the rabbit. If he really is so proud and the big show-off, as you all say he is, then this race isn't going to be hard at all. Soon after, with his very stuck-up attitude, holding a carrot, the rabbit arrived at the race course. Let's race and finish this. I still haven't had breakfast. Finishing their last preparations, they arrived at the starting point. The first one that arrives at the red line at the end of the forest wins. With the mark of the mole, the race started. Just like an arrow, the rabbit flew by. The turtle, on the other hand, began to walk slowly. Whoa, the rabbit was nowhere to be seen. watching the race thought that the turtle was going to get beaten. After running a while, the rabbit stopped and had a look behind him. There was nothing to be seen. By the looks of it, the turtle will finish the race tonight. I better sit and finish my carrot. The rabbit finished eating his carrot looked up the road, and from afar, he saw the turtle coming. With a cheeky grin, he stood up and continued on running. The rabbit had nearly reached the finishing point. I'm a bit sleepy after breakfast. I might sit under this tree and take a nap. As confident as he was about winning the race, the rabbit drifted off to sleep. The turtle continued on walking very, very slowly, but with great confidence. At last, he arrived next to the rabbit. He saw that the rabbit was in a deep sleep. Without stopping, he continued on his way.
A while later, the rabbit woke up. When he looked and could not see the turtle, the turtle is nowhere to be seen. Maybe he doesn't want to race anymore. <laughs> I should finish my race now. As the rabbit was slowly making his way to the finishing point, what does he see? The turtle had passed him. In fact, he was about to finish the race. Using all the energy he had left over, he tried to pass the turtle. But the turtle had already finished the race. Some of the animals waiting at the finish line were extremely happy. All the animals were throwing the turtle up in the air with great excitement. While the rabbit stood in the corner with great sadness, Turtle, the winner of the race, walked towards the rabbit. Mr. Rabbit, the important thing is being consistent about everything that you do. To brag with nonsense and love yourself is weakness. I beat you not because I was faster, but I was wiser and did what I did seriously. You're right. From now on, I will stop bragging about being the fastest amongst everyone. I should return now. My home is a long journey away. The turtle smiled and continued on his way. The rabbit learned a good lesson and noticed his mistake. After that day on, he never ever bragged about himself, nor did he ever race again. Once upon a time, while the summer was still blooming, the animals living in the forest, the birds and the insects, were making the most of the summer. And of course, they had no trouble finding food. It was an ordinary day for the lazy grasshopper. He was eating the roots of the herbs he had picked whilst playing the violin and singing under a tree. Oh, what a lovely day! La la la, I'll play and sing along with my violin and I don't know the rest of the words to the song, but it's okay! When he finished his ear-bleeding song, he heard a noise and listened carefully. In order to understand where and who the noise was coming from, he quickly jumped up high onto the branches of the tree. And right there, he saw from a distance an ant trail. They were marching like soldiers. With great difficulty, the ants were carrying seeds and dry fruits that had fallen off from the trees. The grasshopper jumped to the ground, and as confused as he was, he watched the trail of ants disappear. I never seem to get these ants. They're always working. Right at that moment, he noticed an ant coming his way. The ant was trying to carry a seed much bigger than himself. <coughs> Just as he was passing the grasshopper, the ant dropped the seed he was carrying. In fact, he needed to rest. The grasshopper stared at him with meaningless eyes. Are you moving somewhere? No. Don't tell me there is a big disaster approaching. Is that why you're running away? No. Well then, may I ask what you're doing? We are carrying food to our nests. Radio, you must be expecting a lot of visitors tonight then. Mmm, we are storing food for winter. You're storing food for the winter? What for? And besides, why the rush? There's still a long time for winter. Have fun, just make the most out of the summer. 
Is that so? So what do you suggest we do for winter? I'm sure we'll find something fun to do, don't worry. All you ever think about is fun. What will we eat, I'm asking you? I'll think about that when winter starts. Now it's summer and there's plenty to eat everywhere. The ant had enough listening to the lazy grasshopper's nonsense and tried to put the seed on his back once again. I must keep up with my friends. Will they help me to put the seed on my back? A singer and an artist like me shouldn't carry such heavy things. After hearing such an answer from the grasshopper, the ant gave the grasshopper a rather interesting look and continued to try and put the seed on his back. I suppose I could give you a little help. The grasshopper picked up the rather small seed off the ground and placed it on the ant's back. The ant thanked him and continued on his way. What a useless and empty effort. The grasshopper continued to lay under the tree. After having something small to eat, he continued to play his violin. Oh, what a lovely day! La la la! I play and sing along with my violin, and so I couldn't make up the rest. La la la! la right la, at that la, moment, la, a squirrel la, la, took his head out la, of the tree. La, 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 enough, enough! Please, it's enough! Go and sing your song somewhere else. I'm trying to rest here. The instant the grasshopper stopped his singing, he took a glance at the squirrel, grabbed his violin, and he took off. They don't know how to appreciate an artist in this forest. As the hot summer days continued, the ants continued on carrying food to their nests, while the grasshopper continued to eat, walk around, have fun playing his violin, and sing. Finally, the cold winter had arrived. One morning, when the ants woke up, they had a look outside from their nests and saw that everything was covered in white snow. All the little ant could think of was the other animals living in the cold, freezing and hungry. On the other hand, Due to all the plants being covered with snow, the grasshopper hadn't eaten a single thing for days. He was shivering, had lost all his strength, and wasn't able to play the violin or sing. With great strength, he was trying to walk on the snow. Suddenly, he thought about the hot summer days. How nice were those days. Everywhere was covered in food. I had a full stomach. I was always happy. At that moment, he thought about the ant. He carried food to his nest all summer long. Later he realised he didn't like this idea. He had made fun out of him during the summer. Would he help him now, he wondered? And now it was way too cold for the grasshopper to walk. It's no time to be proud. I have to find the ant's nest and ask for help. He head straight to the ant's nest. He stood in front of the door and yelled. Is anybody there? Please help. Who is it? From the nest he heard a noise. The grasshopper, with his last strength, answered. My dear friend, ant, it's me, grasshopper. Please take me in. By this time, hearing all that was being said, the queen ant approached the little ant. What's going on? Who wants help? Just a lazy grasshopper that sits around, sings all day, my queen. I think he is hungry and seeks help. Anyone who ends up at our doorstep and seeks help should not be rejected. The queen and all the other ants approached the front door of the nest and opened it. The grasshopper was there lying down on the snow because he had no strength anymore. The ants immediately picked the grasshopper up and carried him into the nest. The grasshopper came to himself thanks to the warmth of their nest. They gave him water and food. Now he was feeling much better. The grasshopper thanked the queen and walked next to the little ant. 
I have been very unfair to you. While you were working all summer long, I sat down and just sang. And actually, you warned me, but I did not take you seriously. I regret that. This should be a big lesson for you. We also would like to have fun all summer long, but we do have to think about the future too. If we did not get a food during summer, we might have been in the same position as you. The grasshopper stayed in their nest for a while. He was now much better and healthier. When it was time to go, the ants gave the grasshopper some food. Thank you for everything. You saved my life and I will never forget that. And I will never be lazy from now on. Can I ask for a favor? Sure, tell me. What do you like? Um, when it's summer, you can take music lessons, learn to play the violin and make all the other animals happy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> The stubborn baby elephant. In a land far away, there lived a family of elephants in a forest. The youngest member of this family was a very stubborn and naughty baby elephant. One day, when his parents were going for a walk, they yelled after him. Darling, where are you? Come on, we're going for a walk. Where are you, son? Come on! In a short while, the baby elephant came next to them. He felt no need to go for a walk with them. I don't want to come with you. It's boring. Your siblings are so excited to come. Why are you like this? Well, they can go. We always do the same things, and being an elephant is so boring. Mama and Papa Elephant were very surprised by the last words of their baby, but did not want to show it. Hmm, alrighty then. As you wish. Don't move from here, we'll be back before dark. Sure, as always. His family left the little stubborn elephant alone and went away. The baby elephant played on his own for a while. But soon after, he began to get bored. The more bored he was, the more mad he had become. I don't want to be an elephant anymore. It's bad to be an elephant. I wonder what I should be. Right that moment, he noticed a jumping and hopping gazelle. And so he made up his mind. Yeah, yeah, I should be a gazelle, fast and agile. The baby elephant tried to copy the gazelle and jumped around. But his big and lumpy feet got tangled and he fell down. Head first. And of course, it hurt a little. It's not fun being a gazelle. The baby elephant began to go further into the forest. He came amongst the tree where the monkeys were playing. They were jumping from one branch to another, having so much fun together. So he thought to himself, the monkeys have so much fun. I should be a monkey. So he yelled out to the monkeys. Hey, monkeys, look at me. I'm also a monkey. Play with me too. The monkeys stopped for a little while and looked at the baby elephant. And then they all went down from the tree and surrounded him. One jumped on him, one pulled his ear, one hung on his trunk, and the last one threw a coconut on his head. Baby Elephant was stunned, and he couldn't run away jumping to a branch like the monkeys. They really hurt him. He could not play with the monkeys. Finally, he got rid of them with his trunk and ran away as fast as he could. baby elephant began to move further into the forest. This time round, he saw a squirrel on a tree. The squirrel plucked a chestnut from the branch and went back into his burrow. What a cute animal! Because he's small, he can get in and out of everywhere. Yes, I should be a squirrel! 
The baby elephant tried to climb up the tree and of course failed. So he poked his trunk into the burrow. The poor little squirrel was so frightened that it jumped out as fast as it could. The baby elephant tried to put his head into the burrow this time, but his head got stuck. It was very hard for him to take it out. I'm just not fit to be a squirrel. The trees are too small. The baby elephant was now too far from home. A little further, he came across a beautiful parrot. The parrot was flying from one tree to another. The baby elephant enjoyed watching this. He came closer. I want to be a parrot too. Can you teach me to fly? Of course I can! Together, they went to a high cliff next to a lake. Now watch me and see how I fly. The parrot opened his wings and jumped. He was gliding in the sky. The baby elephant copied him and went down the cliff. As the parrot flew with his wings, the baby elephant fell down from thin air and landed in the lake. Thankfully, he managed to get out and make it to the shore. He was covered in mud and his whole body was in pain. The parrot flew next to him. You should stay being an elephant, my friend. Right at that moment, a baby bird sitting on the cliff fell out of its nest and disappeared in the lake. In a panic, Mother Bird flew next to her baby where it had disappeared. She was flying above the water and yelling. Help! Somebody help! Save my baby! Help! Baby Elephant went in the water that instant, put his trunk in and began to search for the baby bird. After a few seconds went past, he took his trunk out and the baby bird was right there on the tip of his trunk. She's alive! She's alive! The baby elephant carefully put the baby bird down by the lake. Mother bird flew and came next to them. Thank God you were here! If it weren't for you, she would have drowned! Hearing these words, the elephant was very happy. He felt worthy. If I weren't an elephant, I couldn't save this baby bird, he thought. I think I'm meant to stay as an elephant. It was almost night time. The elephant was very far from home now. He was super impatient about this. On his way back, he saw the parrot flying in the sky, the squirrel taking his head out of the burrow, the monkey swinging from one branch to another, and the very fast gazelle that ran past him. But he thought of nothing other than how much he had missed his family and how much he made them upset with his silly stubbornness. All he wanted to do now was to apologize. Once upon a time, there lived three piglets with their mother in a small house. It was time for them to leave their home and learn to live on their own. Their mother called the three piglets next to her. My dear children, the time has come for you to go out into the world. Go and start your new lives. But don't ever forget, whatever you do in this world, do the best you can. This is the only and the best way to stay alive. A little sad with a bit of excitement, the three little piglets said their goodbyes to their mummy and were on their way. After a while, they found some piece of land where they could build their own home. The youngest piglet was determined to build his home with straw. He thought this was the easiest and the fastest way to build a home. That way, he had heaps of time to play. The youngest of them all finished his house in one day. 
He yelled out to the other piglets, "Hey, you guys! I'm already finished." The eldest piglet had a look at the house. Okay, but this house doesn't look steady at all. How will we protect ourselves from the wolf? The youngest piglet didn't take any notice of his brother. Don't worry, nothing will happen. Okay, don't say I didn't warn you. The middle piglet decided to make his house out of wood. From the branches he had collected in the woods, he decided to build a little cubby house. His house took exactly three days to finish. This house was a bit more steady than the one with straw. The eldest piglet walked over towards him. Oh, my dear brother, you've done a great job, but this doesn't look safe at all. Is this house going to protect us from the wolf? The middle piglet answered. Don't worry, this house is very safe. Okay. Don't say I didn't warn you. While the two little piglets were having a great time in their newly built homes, the eldest of them all was constantly working because he was building a home from bricks and rocks. The other piglets thought that his effort was useless. All they did was play around and kill time. Why would you bother with this when you can quickly finish like we have? He, how scared is he? The eldest piglet didn't bother listening to them. He worked for one whole week and managed to finish his house made out of bricks and rocks. A day later, a hungry wolf arrived near their home. He first stood in front of the house made of straw. The little piglet was resting in his house made of straw. The wolf knocked on the door. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. And so the wolf huffed and puffed, and he blew. His house in, but with great effort, the little piglet managed to get away, and off he ran over to his brother's house made from tree branches. He knocked on the door, and when the middle piglet opened the door, the little piglet threw himself inside the house. Hey, close the door! The wolf can come in here. Don't worry, he can't do anything to us in this house. After a while, the wolf came by the second piglet's wooden house and yelled inside. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't blow my house in. And so the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew his house in and brought it down. Both piglets ran to the third piglet's house and barely got away from the wolf. The wolf is going this way. What are we gonna do? The oldest piglet answered, very sure of himself.、Uh, don't worry.、Uh, the wolf cannot come in this house. A little later, the starving wolf came by the third piglet's house of bricks and stone, and yelled to the three piglets. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. Don't you even try, you bad wolf! You cannot come in this house. The wolf got very angry. He huffed and puffed, but nothing happened. He could not bring his house down. He tried and tried, but he couldn't move one single brick. Finally, being exhausted, the wolf decided to try another way to go in. He saw the chimney up on the roof, and started to climb. Realizing that the wolf was going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney, the piglet quickly lit up the fireplace right under the chimney and put a big bucket of water on the wood. The wolf barely climbed up the chimney. And threw himself in, and went straight into the boiling bucket. Ah,、oh, help! Help! I'm burning! Save me! Ah,、oh, help! Finally, being free from. 
from the wolf, the piglets hugged each other with joy. The three piglets went to their mother's house the next day to tell her all that had happened. The youngest one came next to his mother. You were right, Mummy. Whatever we did in this world, we have done it to our best. If you really work for something, it will be a success. From that day on, the two piglets were never lazy. They worked hard like their big brother and lived a happy and safe life. Thank you.